Antibiotic Research UK, one of the first charities tackling drug-resistant infections, focuses on research, education and patient support. We spoke with Head of Research, Julia Hubbard. Julia Hubbard, thank you very much for joining us. Now, antibiotic resistance is a threat to everyone. It can have a huge impact on every medical procedure. Just, just tell us how much of a problem it is. Well, it's a huge worldwide problem. It's a global problem and it's getting worse. Um, so um, bacteria, viruses, fungi um, can naturally evolve and develop resistance to almost any antibiotic um, we throw at them. And on an individual level, and in terms of um, health procedures here, one of the, I think, big examples people um, might be aware of is with cancer. So when you're treated for cancer, that often suppresses your immune system and very liable to get infections. And during a typical um, course of chemotherapy, a patient will prescribe five to seven different courses of antibiotics. Yeah. Um, they also have a 20% chance of um, developing a severe infection and being admitted to hospital where they're very dependent on antibiotics. So if those antibiotics no longer work because they get a bacteria that is resistant to those antibiotics and obviously they're in serious trouble and sadly some do die. And part of what you do is to support these patients. Tell us how you do that. Well, yes, we, we have a, a, a range of um, activities um, to try and support patients. And um, one of these is information on our website and we produce information leaflets, but we also have a phone line um, where people can contact us um, to get um, specific advice. For example, during the pandemic, um, a lady called Sharon got in touch. She had um, developed a urinary tract infection. And unfortunately, that developed into an episode of sepsis and she was admitted to hospital. And now they kept trying different antibiotics, but unfortunately, the infection she had was resistant to those. So she ended up being told that she had an ESBL, E. coli infection that was multi-drug resistant and that because of that, they were having to try last line antibiotics and she had to move to an isolation ward for three weeks. So fortunately, Sharon survived. But when she came home, she was very confused. She really hadn't understood what was happening to her. So she contacted us and we were able to explain to her what an ESBL infection was, why she had to isolate. And most importantly, I think, for Sharon at this point, was, was she still infectious to her three children? So we can provide this um, listening ear and uh, support to try and guide, guide patients and support them as they go through these problems. And all this is available on our website, so please get in touch. One of the big problems is fewer and fewer antibiotics are being developed and you do research. So this is something that you're really driving, is that right? Yes, that's right. We have a, a number of research initiatives to try and support research. This includes funding um, some of the other antibiotic resistant research that it, where, where people could find it difficult to find funds from other sources. And particularly, we're focused on early career researchers and young researchers and trying to support them. And um, a few years ago, through our small grant scheme, um, we supported a group of researchers at Newcastle University um, who wanted to look at a new antibiotic target. Now, they would have found it really difficult to get funding for this from anywhere else, from traditional government funding and welcome, for example. And that work has now progressed so that the funding we supplied had a direct impact on the ability of these researchers to get a much larger grant from Innovate UK. And this is now supporting an active antibiotic drug discovery um, programme between Bicycle Therapeutics, who are based in Cambridge, and Newcastle University. So we all are very hopeful that there'll be actually be a novel antibiotic to come out of this research. And what can people do to make a difference? Can they, can they do something, someone that's on antibiotics? Does it just finish a course? Is that the big message? Yes, we hear about finishing the course all the time and that's critically important. And people don't. <laughs> and I think it's really important for people to understand why they need to finish the course. Not only 
um, if they finish their course, they may feel, well, they may still have some bacteria. And they, they, those could grow again, so the infection would come back. But while they have low doses of antibiotics in them, that bacteria could also evolve and become resistant to that antibiotic. So there's a direct link between taking your antibiotics and taking them properly and um, antibiotic resistance. And I'm not sure everybody always understands that. It's also obviously really important that if for some reason you have antibiotics laying around, you don't get rid of them by flushing them down the loo or putting them in the bin, that you do take them back to your pharmacist so they're disposed of safely and they don't end up in the environment where other bacteria could become resistant to them. Okay, Julie, thank you very much. Thank you.